Hey guys, this is Oliver Joyce from Whiskey Barrel Studios, and I got a Godo quick tip for those who want to localize their game into many different languages. Surprisingly easy to do if you get started early. If you try to do it at the end of your game, not so easy. Let's jump in. All right, got a new project in Godo which I've just set up. Uh, I'm using Godo 4 right now. I've got a control node up the top here and a little color rect for the background, not important, but I've got uh, two buttons, one for English, one for French, and two text labels here and uh, a sprite, <laughs> also not important. But look, the button English here, when you press it, it has a signal node here, um, and that signal connects to a little script which we're gonna create here. I've pre-created already, but I'm gonna show you that in a second. But once you've set these up like this, we're gonna stop, go to save the project, and we're gonna go over to Google Sheets. Now there's other tools you can use for this, but I like Google Sheets because uh, I can create an online spreadsheet and then send links to different people to help with the translation. When I create a new sheet, you know, I've just done new Google Sheet. It presents me with this here, blank spreadsheet. Up the top, I've got EN for English, FR for French. If you wanted to create a new language, you can go DE for German, uh, JP for Japanese, whatever it is, not a problem. But you want to put them on that top row there. And sometimes you might like to sort of color in that row just to sort of say that's something different and, you know, set the text to white so it's easy to see. These are my text strings here. That first column is what I'm going to use to call as the sort of the string in Godot. English, French, hello, burger, shakes, okay? The text itself in English, English, Francois, um, <laughs> Francois, hello, I want to eat string hamburgers that percentage s is for a variable so when you have a variable in Godot, you can um, substitute it with this percentage s and then plus percentage shakes importantly here notice i've got a little apostrophe i'm going to come back and show you why if you try to add a plus in a string it'll try to turn it into like some kind of um no, number in in uh, a formula in google sheets okay once you've set up something like this you can go File, Download, CSV, okay? CSV is the file format we're gonna use. If you can find a tool that exports it automatically, great. That's even easier. I haven't been able to find such a tool, so I do it this way, which is slightly tedious. Download here. That downloads that to my download folder. Then I grab this, copy it, and I paste it in my game folder, my Godot game folder. Pasting it here, I'm replacing the file. Usually just replace it, not a problem. Okay, so the first time you do this, first time you load up Godot and you created that file, you, what you wanna go up to is project, project settings, over here to localization, which is the third tab. Now I'm gonna get rid of these and we'll add them in again. You go translations, add. Now what you're gonna see here is your CSV file, but you don't need to import that. You're gonna see four files here. Now, why four? Because if we go back to here, um, oh, wrong one. There we go. If you go back to here, you're gonna see English, French, German, Japanese. Whatever column I create here, it's gonna create a new file when it downloads the CSV. For now, we're gonna just import English and French. Open them up. Okay, English translation, French translation. You only need to do that once, okay? Only once, which is great. Oh yeah, when I say once, I mean once per language. So you can add extra languages by going project, project settings, add in, we could add in German and Japanese there, not a problem. It's not gonna throw an error or anything if you don't have anything in those columns. Um, anything that's blank will just default back to English. Okay, so we've got those languages in there. We're only looking at English and French right now, but we can create a new script here, which I've done. And let's have a look at this script. In it, up here, you don't need to use this. When the project gets bigger, you might want to keep a track of what the, ang the languages are called. Um, EN for English, FR for French. As you add more languages, you might want to go DE for German, whatever it is, not a problem. But this is actually unused in this project, but I'm just showing you how you might use it later. Okay, when we're ready, we update the UI. We have two variables, three, or well, two labels, but one that extends it slightly, and some text for the buttons. Now, what I want you to notice here is this TR thing, TR bracket 
and then your string. TR is for translate. That's all you got to do. And then Godot will do the rest. So that hello string was actually this hello string from here. And now in hello, I could have said, you know, hi or whatever it is. Bonjour in French, hello in English. That's going to come up there. This second string, burgers. Okay, burgers has a little modulo thing. Then you have square brackets, my var one. So if you wanted to have like a variable in your string, like, you know, my um, barbarian has 57 hit points, then that's what that's for. So in this example, hello, I want to eat percentage S hamburgers. We can put a string in there and that is going to be my var one. You can actually get away with using integers and so on. Uh, it translate to a string for you. Uh, it's pretty cool. I can also add this second bit of text shakes and the reason I've added that bit in there is because if you don't have this little apostrophe there, uh, that can throw an error. So if I took that out, see how that's throwing an error? It's like it's trying to turn that into a sum. That took me a bit of mucking around to figure that out, but it seems to work. There might be other ways to do it, but I'm going to undo that. So back to here and then two buttons. And when you click on those buttons, how it translated is there's a built-in um, class called the translation server, set locale. EN for English, FR for French. Okay, let's run it and actually see what happens. Hello, I want to eat five hamburgers and three shakes. Of course you do. Uh, that's the default English. Now let's translate it to French. Bonjour, je veux manger uh, cinq hamburger uh, un tre de shakes. I can't speak French. Okay, I'm sure you guys do a lot better. Look, English, French, instant translation. How good is that? That's it. That's localization. Not much to it. Uh, super simple to use. I'm not even a very good coder, but you know, even works for me. Uh, if you want any more Godot tutorials and things from me, um, please uh, drop us a comment and um, yeah, like and subscribe. And if you have another way of doing it or you find easier ways to import things from Google Sheets and so on, uh, let me know in the comments because that would be super useful for me as well. Okay, my friends, uh, until next time, good luck with your Godot journey and I'll uh, see you real soon. Bye for now.